class where I'm going to teach you about the scotch opening today. One of the most popular openings in chess, we're going to look at many, many different variations, of course. It's a pity that we won't have enough time to cover it all, as this is a very complex opening. But I hope I will give you main ideas and plans for both sides in uh, most of the main lines. Also, I have prepared an interesting sideline for all of you who want to test out new things in your blitz games and perhaps surprise uh, your opponents with a very interesting play with the black pieces and first i just want to make sure that you guys uh, are able to see me and hear me well um uh hello everyone and hola to those hello jose hello mangrover Markel, and emmanuel uh good evening to everyone i'm so happy I'm so happy to, to see you all today. It's so nice to see same people uh, joining your streams every every week. Um, and Alan, you're today from the very start. I hope you're having a, a good day and uh, I will do my best to make it even better. What can be better than <laughs> learning chess uh, during the evening time? By the way, I don't know where are you from, Alan? Um, I should always say good evening to those from the east part of the world and uh, um, and uh, good morning to those from the west part of the world. Sometimes when I say east and west, I still have to translate that English word into into my language and see where which one is right, which one is left. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I I think that you guys <clears throat> can hear me and see me well. Oh, Alan, you're from Australia. Oh my God, two a.m. All right, then I gotta bring my best game today for you, right? Like, I cannot keep you up in the middle of the night for nothing, yeah? Okay. So once we have a confirmation now, everything seems to be okay. Um, there are many, many different lines that uh, both white and black would play. Not too many good sign lines, but in the main lines, there are a lot of deviations. And uh, uh, when I was preparing for this opening, I thought that uh, first impression was that it's, it's as complex as Rui Lopez, but I think it's not. Rui Lopez must be the most complex opening in, in chess. Yes, eccentric horse. Maybe I should always just say good day, right? Yeah, Prabal, uh, you're from India. I know that there are, I think, two and a half hours uh, between us. Uh, difference or maybe three hours I ha i'm not sure i know you don't have winter time and we change times during the winter all right so what is it for us today so today is going to be the scotch day with white we're going to play e4 and if you play with black pieces e5 as a response to one e4 then you absolutely have to listen to what i have to say for you today now, if you're playing Italian Rui Lopez, perhaps I can change your mind and you will be playing a new opening, which we're going to arrive at right now, and it's the move D4. So this is called the Scotch game. Uh, don't know who made it uh, very popular in the modern era, but I think that a lot of merits goes to uh, Kaspar because he was trying this in the World Championships in the 90s against um, Short, uh, uh, Grandmaster from England, as well as Karpov. He didn't stay with it uh, later because he was always playing many different openings, but if uh, someone as good as Kasparov tries this in the most important matches of his lifetime, uh, it means that the opening is solid and uh, White hopes to get an advantage. Plus, as um, E4, E5 players with the black pieces, uh, I don't think that most of us spend a lot of time on learning the scotch compared to learning the italian and Rui Lopez, as those i believe are the most popular choices for the white pieces someone is asking who would watch this over norway chess right well with norway chess at least you can always um come back later just like to this one as well but here you're participating live right so since this is very interactive i would uh think that it's smarter to be in in this use me as your chess coach participate in the lesson by asking questions answering my questions and then you can look back at how the how carlson is playing right 
Because there, I don't think no uh, someone is going to read your comments, yeah? <laughs> yeah, but it's possible to, to see uh, both. Hello, Hitaka. Fr hello to Indonesia. So, what are the options here for black? Well, pretty much we're threatening to both um, taking on e5 and d5. So, the only move here for black, I guess, that makes sense is takes on d4. And after which we enter a position where white has slight advantage in the center, control and space. So, as we look at the pawn structure right now, in, back in the old days, people were very happy here with white. e4 guarantees us space advantage however there were these hyper modernist free-minded people that thought that sometimes it is good to take away from the center and now i'm giving the benefits from the black side uh, that you can open up the file and so if black is able to attack this e4 pawn with a lot of pieces say rook to e8 and knight to f6 that already means a system of play right and if he succeeds in that black could also hold an upper hand now another idea for black is to break the white center control advantage with the move d7 to d5 at some point. Most of the time in the scotch we're going to see this damage a black's pawn structure when black will be able to take back the knight with the b take c6 or pawn take c6. Now if we could imagine the structure after d uh, knight take c6 and d take c6 uh, white has this pawn majority on the king side and so all of the end games um, should in general be slightly more comfortable to play with white because white has this opportunity to create um, a pass pawn although they're very fine for black as well but from the practical sense i think most people like white right and um, D knight x6 b x6 would strengthen the black center and allow an easier d5 we'll get to that now before we um, look at the main lines, which is usually black plays one of these two moves, although there are alternatives. Uh, small alternatives that are not that bad would be bishop to b4 check, and also uh, moves like g6. Uh, but uh, some beginners might be taking uh, the knight. So since this is very rare, I will just give you a, a short line how to find yourself confident over here. I also will always take a look at the chat. Um, I, I have to alt tap, so sometimes I have to switch screens. So sometimes I will be a little bit slow, maybe, to read the questions, but I promise I will stop and try to keep track on uh, most of them. So, hello, Jafar. And uh, uh, Prabal is saying, yeah, if, if we were to, uh, like, at any point, uh, black allows that, uh, then we exchange the queens and endgame is good for white because black's king is gonna be misplaced so most of the time black is going to take on c6 after knight a6 it's only after queen is out which you're gonna see later in the video so knight xd4 queen d4 um, many amateurs might be thinking that queen is a little bit exposed of whites in the center but it's not true queen is here very well developed she's very active and no knight is coming to c6 to threaten her and so this is a very comfortable position we have seen before uh, black made making mistake on c5 in one of my previous um, uh, lessons and here perhaps uh, the go-to plan is not to allow the d5 break that is very important to not allow as black would exchange their weak pawn on on d5 so we just play knight to c3 and the rest is easy say bishop f4 queenside castle supplying pressure on a d pawn and trying to fight for the d5 square is one of the possible plans on white for instance finds himself very comfortable now one of the ways black could be playing this would be with queen f6 this is not good but this is not terrible right and the idea is that black wants an end game where uh, white is not obliged to take right now the knight would be taking and black would be developing the pieces so instead white usually is trying something like e5 by the way bishop e3 is also comfortable it's really hard to go wrong over here so we would have say a move like e5 queen uh, seems to be natural on b6 offering another queen trade and then we could exchange and damage their pawn structure and white just plays say bishop to c3 bishop d2 castles and has a very good end game with a space advantage and also um, solid lead and uh, development even perhaps depending of course how black plays but white uh, pieces have more promising squares due to the central and space control that they have 
So this is a sideline and 99% uh, of the games, uh, you won't encounter that. Yeah, it's um, so it's possible to play there definitely um, uh, bishop e3, but I just see no nothing wrong with say this line. Like I imagine a centering horse like knight c3. I would imagine like bishop b4. I play bishop d2. Okay, a3 castles. I I enjoyed this position as why. I think I can torture black. Like what do you do first of all with the light square bishop, right? That is also a question. D6 you could of course try at some point, right? But nevertheless, I have tricks with all sorts of knight d5 threatening um, the pawn on c7 and uh, the bishop on b4. And there are many tricks that prevent you from developing very comfortably here, right? So I feel like this endgame is very dangerous as centric horse for black as well. I know that uh, bishop e3 is also a move here, right? So there is this queen b2. Um, and here, of course, queen takes b2, wins a piece. Uh, but uh, there is this bishop e3, that's what I meant to move. But uh, um, of course, queen takes b6 is also uh, very comfortable. So both moves are good, I would say. No, um, uh, Durjana is asking if uh, scotch is a drawish opening. Depends on what you mean by drawish, right? So if computer says white has point 0.1 of an advantage right it's it doesn't mean a draw at all right um like remember that we humans we tend to make mistakes and even in correspondent chess i mean you could be playing scotch for a win right but every opening in chess by theory uh, if you use the best books and the engines they're all drawish like there are no openings that get long-term advantage black can equalize in any opening right that's why most of the correspondent chess uh, uh, games and in a draw where people use engines and best books. But remember that you're a human being and you should be playing positions that uh, you feel f comfortable in, that fits your style and character, uh, where you know plans and uh, you can play a almost any opening for a win. Just don't play something objectively bad, right? So Eccentric Horse is asking why... Uh, why scotch is not uh, particularly very popular uh, among the top elite i think that uh, elite players dictate the fashion right and this is the question to you then right uh, d4 d5 uh, bishop f4 is a drawish opening like black and equalize here why did carlson play this for so uh for so many games like 10 years ago five years ago why did he win first of all and why did the whole world follow the magnus carlson so best players dictate fashion uh, what they play everyone plays and so maybe in a couple of years carlson starts playing scotch and then everyone is gonna play scotch as well right so they're picking less analyzed lines perhaps maybe scotch is more forcing uh, and perhaps there are less deviations here compared to Italian and Rui Lopez, you exchange their pieces a little bit less. Um, but I think that uh, fashions change and uh, we could see a change and uh, we can come back to scotch. Like there is no refutation of the scotch, so to say. And uh, I can answer, Jack Park is asking, why you don't see scotch as much as in the 90s? Because in the 90s, Kasparov was playing scotch. If Magnus Carlsen started playing scotch now, then you would see scotch. Best players dictate the fashion. And so once, if someone starts playing uh, a particular opening, then uh, usually people and players be below that level, they're following that passion. Right? And uh, maybe no one is uh, feeling like scotch is fi fitting their character and uh, style the most right now. But you cannot say the scotch is unseen. It's just that... Is perhaps not regularly played among the elite players, right? And that's all. So here, um, let's look at a couple of lines. First of all, it's important to say that moves like bishop g5 are bad uh, because black hasn't committed to castling. You're already defending d4 and knight d4, uh, the pawn on e4 and uh, the knight on d4. You have to guard them as, as, as white. And so black is able just to play h6 g5 here right so say h6 if you take then again you will have problems guarding uh both of these like white is feeling under pressure and uh, if you're deciding to play this for the color of 
white. Uh, for blacks, then g5 is a move to play here, and uh, we're winning the pawn on e4. So these bishop g5 and deviations are really not good alternatives for white. So this is called um, the four knights opening. White wants uh, here just to calmly develop uh, the king side and hopes for a king side attack in the middle game. So both knight f6 and bishop c5 here are the main lines. We're going to take a look at both. And for bishop c5 line, we're going to look at Kasparov's variation with knight takes c6, which is not the most popular. I think it's the second most popular line after bishop e3, but it will give you, hopefully, a repertoire today. By the way, there is a move that I have for you as a surprise. Uh, I hope that I will be in time to cover this line. And I love playing queen h4 in blitz games from time to time. This is a surprise weapon, and... You wouldn't believe how many games I have won, like, got winning positions, 10 or 15 moves. Objectively, a bad move. If white knows what he's doing, black is not lost, but black is going to be in trouble. But I like it as a surprise weapon from time to time. And especially if you are, like, below, I don't know, 1,800, 2,000, uh, you can use this in online and, and rated blitz uh, games. So, let's take a look. Knight f6, knight c3, and here um, black has a couple of moves to play. Uh, first of all, uh, the main line is uh, bishop to b4. That's what we're going to, to look at heavily. I'm trying to follow the commentary as much as I can. Hello, Nayan. Um, welcome. Nice, you, he's saying nice t-shirt. Thank you. I think it's, yeah, you could call it a shirt, I guess. Not very good at clothes vocabulary, but yeah. It's a little bit of calmer maybe than a t-shirt, but you could say it like that, right? So... Uh, bishop c5 here is less popular because uh, there is no queen f6 so usually as in the uh, most of the scotch main lines queen goes to f6 um, so that she would apply the pressure on f2 indirectly and the knight on d4 and here that's the reason why bishop c5 is a bit perhaps less popular so if bishop c5 we can follow that with bishop e3 and now we're threatening to take on e6 c6 and win the game with the idea of having the discovered attacks against the bishop and also hitting the queen, right? So here, bishop b6 seems to be logical so that the bishop wouldn't, hanging, wouldn't be hanging. And now I have very interesting and solid plan that will just leave you at peace, right? So we just play queen d2 if you ever enter that. So the plan is to castle long, f3, and kingside attack. Very simple. Now, if we were just, in case you want to learn this from the, the other curler, if white is just playing bishop e2, then I feel like it's, it could be too slow. Castles, castles, and rook e8, and black is already applying pressure on e4. That's what I was referring to this very starting position. Feels like white has space, but there is this other picture, right? e4 is always under pressure, and to a lot of times in similar lines, after f3, black follows with d5. And black equalizes comfortably. So that's why I recommend this queen d2, right? So let's say castles again, castles, rook e8, and now f3 with a d of king side play. So if he doesn't uh, do anything that forces us to react, we attack on the king side. So most of the players try d5, and white uh, can develop a beautiful initiative here. So a line to remember is takes on d5. Knight takes d5 and continue very actively. Bishop to g5. So the idea is to force f6. Once we force f6, we have bishop c4 and the pin. So for example, f6, bishop c4. And the activity of white's pieces just promise an advantage. Yes, there are a lot of captures, right? Say, uh, but they are all solved in, in one or two move combinations, right? So say it takes on g5, you could take on d5, right? So the main line is say, takes on d4, we take on d5. You could also take with the bishop, but I just like leaving the, um, the discovered attack possibilities, right? So say bishop e6, and now bishop is going to be lost, right? So we could take on f6, for example, takes, takes on b6, and a forcing line, right? And if that's what, the, say, the best that black can get, I'm feeling very comfortable in this endgame uh, with white. I feel like black's pawn structure is horrendous. Uh, we're threatening also to invade to the seventh rank, right? Of course, we have to watch out for rookie two and calculate a bit. But white has a chances to play this for a win. So again, in the four knights, if uh, bishop to c5, we go bishop e3. 
and our plan is to go queen d2 castles and i will leave you at that now the main line here is uh bishop to b4 so yes uh jack in general if if in these structures white is playing this with f3 and you cannot apply pressure on e4 no more black is hitting with d5 um of course you have to take care of the tactics if white is not playing the pawn to f3 in general um then you could be hoping for both d5 you're never saying no to d5 that's always on your mind but you could also consider applying pressure on e4 as black yeah. yeah in that line this is very interesting so someone suggested um eccentric horse was asking oops wrong line uh bishop c5 and bishop e3 so i guess that if they castle long it's um i don't know how would they even castle long they're so far away and king has to go somewhere right eccentric horse i don't think that it's even on black's uh mind to castle queen side that's too slow no I would imagine that you want to play something like d6 because, okay, d5 maybe, right? But, uh, okay, first of all, here I just take and take on c5. So that seems to be not good. So, for example, taking on c6, right? So takes, takes. This is just horrible for black, right? So I don't know how to even attempt here to, to, to castle queen side, right? So I think that th this is something you are not going to encounter, yeah. So bishop to b4, uh, this is the main line, and now they're threatening knight takes e4. So uh, don't blend their bishop d3 knight takes d4, please. Okay. And uh, so here we take, right? So we just take on c6. So I said so too many times. I have to avoid this. Black uh, cannot take on, on, on c6 with uh, usually all of these endgames when we can swap on, on d8 are good for white not to say that we're lost or anything but okay here um, we cast so long and we should be absolutely fine the fact that e4 drops doesn't bother us we take on g7 right and after rook g8 bishop comes back and defends f2 right and now we cast so long right? so this is something you're not going to encounter and what you're going to see is b takes c6 so this is the main line. Again, I always like to go from the start once more, just to boost your memory. Knight c6, d4, takes, takes. We're looking at knight f6 now. Knight to c3, bishop to b4, takes and takes. So black aims to strike with d5, right? And they want to get this mobile center. So just remember that e5s and all of these are not good. For example, here e5, queen e7, and you're going to have problems. For example, queen e2, knight d5, where he feels that uh, white is under pressure. Right? So we're playing bishop to d3, and we're going to open up that bishop by taking on d5 or pushing, and this bishop is going to be open. Bishop will be aiming at opponent's kings. So we have a question about taking as in between move. This is just good for, for white, right? So all of these, uh, you're giving up uh, the bishop pair, and now I will have perhaps even stronger attack, right? With hopes to, to play e5. Um, the thing is that, yes, you have a statical advantage as black of having a damaged pawn structure in white's position, but please take a note. Uh, your pawn structure is also damaged maybe my c pawns are more isolated than yours so you could make an argument that say hand game might be good uh, for 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 black but please survive till end game and two bishops is also something that is known as very strong uh, thing in the end game and i feel like here white shouldn't be bothered by the queen side uh, pawns uh, that are doubled i imagine like i'm making random moves right just to, to make a point and uh I feel like I, I like this position with uh, with white. I, I wouldn't play this with black. So say, for example, something like this. My bishops are just very, very strong. Not to say that sometimes my bishop could come to a3. I feel like two bishops is very good. So that hopefully answers your question. So we have bishop to d3. Black plays d5. Now, if they castle, just going to transpose to what we're going to see. We take on d5. 
take on d5 and we don't blunder d4 when peace is lost or okay so, so, something bad is going to happen to white so castles and castles and we find ourselves in this position so white has a better pawn structure uh, but black has so, the so-called mobile pawns in the center which cover very important squares uh, and white here will try to attack the black's center uh, these pawns and plus kingside attack so a very good move now is bishop g5 since uh, black castled and has not achieved dominance over the center uh, he cannot play h6 and g5 so the bishop here is very very comfortable uh, with this spin and black might need to come back with bishop to e7 at some point and now we're creating the threat of taking on f6 and taking on d5 Bishop air from hell. Yeah, Mangrover. <laughs> yeah, you could call it like that. So black usually solidifies the center with c6 and we play queen f3. And here just one of the many plans, you might not go for this, would be to say go knight e2. Uh, knight e2 allows um, for us to break in the center as well, c4. Uh, and in some cases knight could be maneuvered to d4 to the center sometimes even f5 rook goes to the center and i like to play this particular plan as white so for example uh, bishop to e7 right h3 to stop bishop to g4 and say bishop e6 and knight e2 so these are my go-to ideas uh, first i want to play maybe rook e1 and knight d4 and I'm thinking about more or less these ideas. I know c4 is not possible now. Just saying, right, that it could be in, in, in some cases. So alternatives, uh, if you don't like this, there is also rook fe1. Black objectively is totally fine. Also, grandmasters are always playing bishop e7 in these because uh, they don't want to get an endgame, which would be hard to win with black. But perhaps if you're playing a stronger opponent or you like to be... Uh, playing endgame after bishop d6 it's not such a bad idea again we could play this with knight e2 and same ideas but say takes 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 and takes and knight e2 uh, again gives a modest opening for endgame for white so say rook b8 and b3 and uh, black has the bishop pair here with a damaged pawn structure and uh, it's very balanced objectively white is slightly better uh, white's pieces have a little bit maybe more promising squares in general we want to put the pawns on the dark squares as we have the light square bishop and we take it from here right black center control really doesn't matter in that game the reason for knight e2 is because if say just make a random move and now rook b8 b3 bishop e5 is what i not want to run into right so this an end game is also a possibility if they don't play bishop to e7 I will try to cover the main lines jack park and i will also give you a very nice sideline for black at the end but we will see depending on the time uh i, th I feel like i should cover the main lines uh, first and then if we have time we're going to expand on those okay so this is one line now the second main line that i want to look at would be the with bishop to c5 so we have takes takes and here black plays the move bishop to c5 so there are a couple of moves here to play there is bishop to e3 being the most popular knight b3 being probably the third most popular and our move knight takes c6 the kasparov's variation or at least that's how i like to call it because he was the one that popularized it more than anyone else i believe so we have knight takes c6 and here the main move in the scotch uh, in many of these lines with bishop c5 is queen f6 it's an in-between move a uh, threatening mate in one which doesn't allow white to develop comfortable at least forces white to play some weird move like queen d2 or queen f3 so if there were just to take on c6 one of the main ideas in these structures would be to get knight to c3 and knight to e4 to kick out the black's bishop from this very beautiful diagonal for example d6 knight to c3 gonna show you how a couple of games were played knight to f6 and now knight to a4 asking the questions about the bishop so 
If they were to play bishop d4, we just kick him out anyway. Bishop e5 traps the bishop with f4. So it turns out they have to go back. And here we're going to have two bishop advantage. So for example, bishop to g5 natural moves. Bishop h4, castles, castles, rook to e8, knight takes, a takes b6. And f4 was seen in a couple of games. White has slight advantage here. Black didn't play perfectly, but seemed to be naturally and white enjoys the bishop pair and slight space advantage. Now, most of the scotch players who are prepared, they will know the move queen f6. This is the main line, and our move here is going to be queen to d2. So, white wants to, to just play bishop to d3, uh, then knight c3, and kingside castling, and transpose to an end game with the queen exchange, as black is going to take probably d takes c6, where white is going to have the pawn majority on the king side and it's similar to exchange variation of the Rui Lopez where we're hoping to create a pass pawn and win at the end game as white. So the idea of queen d2 is at some point to get queen f4 and queen g5 and offer a queen trade. So if, um, if black plays uh, d takes c6 here which is uh, the main move, I have to make sure that I'm going to promote this into the main line. Let's take a look at b takes c6 first. Knight to c3. One of the possible moves, knight to e7. And here, after the knight moved, as queen f4 here uh, doesn't threaten to exchange queens. Uh, because black will always have the development knight takes f6 idea. But after the knight has already moved, we can finally play queen to f4, right? And say something like this uh, could be an idea. Bishop d2, castles long. What I think a position that is very interesting to play. And uh, both players have chances. White objectively is better. You can also play an idea queen knight to a4 when we hit the bishop. That's always on our mind. So this is a serious sideline but not very popular. Instead... Instead, with queen f6, d takes c6 is the main move as they want to put the rook on d8. So that's what they're hoping with uh, this queen to f6 and then d takes c6, which was finally allowed because no queens were swapped along the d file. And black wants to get this. And don't be shy. Please say uh, hello and ask questions. Uh, am I explaining this well? Is everything understandable? And... Uh, Try to use me as your chess coach if you have any chess related questions. I would also appreciate very much if those who are watching would put a like on this video. Uh, thank you very much for that. So here we're going to play knight to c3. Black plays bishop e6 and play, pre prepares rook to d8. And now it's important not to allow black castle queen side because then he's even going to take care of the king. So, for example, if we play bishop d3, it's met by, by queenside castling, and this is already not good for, uh, for black, right? Uh, for white, I'm sorry. Because not only he did put the rook on d8, where he's very active, but also the, the king on c8 seems to be very, very safe. So, instead, we want to keep the queen on the d file and wait for him to play rook d8, and then we can have those ideas with queen f4 and queen g5. So here the main uh, Kasparov's novelty maybe or a move that he ignited this variation with was knight to a4. So it's already a scene idea for you in the previous lines. But we're asking questions about this very powerful bishop on c5. So here rook d8 usually follows and we have bishop to d3. After that bishop d4 is the main move. And... Uh, it's important not to play c3 prematurely, as indirectly the bishop on d3 is hanging. So there is a deflection tactic uh, possible. If we deflect the, the white's queen, we can take on f2. Queen takes f2 and rook d3 is not a disaster for white, but not as much advantage as if we castle first and now we're threatening c3. So here it's not pina coladas for black. And if you're playing this without any kind of preparation, I feel like black could be in, 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 in big trouble. So, as we're looking at this position, there are many moves to play, but I think that white's na next responses are, are pretty natural. There are forcing lines. 
and uh, knight to e7 is one of the moves that was tried um, then white is simply kicking the bishop out with c3 and here okay b5 is probably the main move that you're going to encounter i feel like counter attacking is the most natural one knight is trapped on a4 and now the most forcing line is good for white so for example takes the bishop if they take on a4 we play queen c2 so they take on d4 they queen to c2 and now depending on what they take we just capture it's the most forcing line nothing hard to remember let's say takes takes and after knight c5 we have huge compensation for the pawn black's pawn structure is highly damaged right and here like everyone would pick white all day long white is playing this for a win and that's what kasparov went for in the game against short so it's also possible to take the knight so then same takes takes bishop has to drop to c2 and white has white was a lot better and again in 1993 match kasparov short right so this was their go-to analysis yeah mangrover I, I i took care of b5 right and the centric horse is asking about uh, knight to a4 after knight e4 let me go back to that <clears throat> So after knight e4, that's the whole point, right? That I want I want to kick your bishop out. Again, there are many deviations here and there are many moves to play. But white's plan stayed the same, right? So I think that I would, again, just continue with bishop to d3. And now the purpose of, of the knight on a4 was, uh, was achieved. I'm kicking you out of that diagonal, right? So castles, I guess I will move the queen. Maybe I could castle now. I'm thinking about moves like, say, queen to a5 as well. I could also just think about the end game sometimes with queen to g5, right? So this would be my go-to ideas. Maybe queen to e3, right? And these positions are balanced. Uh, both players are trying to play this uh, for a win a lot of the times. And it's a fight. And I, I, I see by any means that draw is not the, like, draw is not the most likely result. How can this be drawish? Yes, you put this on the computer and uh, you might be thinking that, okay, bishop d6 or whatever else he plays, like 0 0.1 for white, 0 0.2 for white. But same would go with Italian or Rui Lopez if black plays perfectly. But the position itself is far from being drawish. There are too many imbalances. There is fight, right? In pawn structure, in the advantages, white's knight after all is on, on a4, right? Yeah, so it depends on your taste. I would tell you this way, right? So say you look at this position and you like, you know that op it's very important, guys, when you choose uh, an opening, you must choose an opening that is objectively all right. So if you're playing with white, you want to have zero, at least equality. So if you can choose any line and you even if, say, the best play leads to zero, right? But there is a lot of room for black to be making mistake and you can win the game right away. If you're playing with black, you can afford playing 0 0.6 objective evaluation. But what is important that you would feel that the position is comfortable for you. Look at the chat right now. There are people that are saying black is comfortable, castles long, bishops are looking good, initiative. Play this with black, right? There are other sides in the chat who are saying white is comfortable in all of these lines. Play this with white. And I like to play my openings with both colors. When I know uh, what white wants and when I know what black wants, I kind of feel the weak sp spots. Uh, that I otherwise wouldn't be feeling. So everything I play with black, I like to play against this with white as well, right? Right, so as, as we analyze that, I think that, uh, okay, bishop d3 here, castles. I, I'm not exactly sure what is theory here. Um, I would be actually very interested. I could just, if you're so interested, I could just quickly look up the database if, um, if there are any moves played there. Right, so instead of bishop d3, uh, grandmasters are playing queen to e3, right? So the idea is that I don't give you long castling. Very simple. I have seen this in uh, one game by Alehain, so the idea is very nice. What about that eccentric horse? 
Queen e3 is a very nice resource. I like it. I have seen an Alahain's game where he used this idea against uh, another player in completely different opening just to prevent black from castling long right? for now right uh, there are quite a few books uh, uh Niall patel on uh, good books on scotch um there is one uh, one book the scotch game explained by gary lane i would encourage you to read that and there is one more book that i could recommend it's called starting out the scotch game by john ems who is a legendary author so two books that I could like remember from uh, from my memory. So Queen E3 here is very nice, guys. You have to agree, right? I'm not saying like black is absolutely fine here. So uh, people even tried Knight H6 and those kind of ideas here. And uh, this is already very, very sidelined, right? Yeah, but I mean, okay, A6, right? I could still go Queen E7 there at some point if you castle, right? So now you play A6, you're kind of wasting time in such positions. So what about F4s, E5s, huh? Who is wasting time now, right? If I already move my Queen, I have to move her anyway. I'm not wasting my time because Queen was uh, would be hit by Rook D anyway. Now A6 in such a sharp position is a huge tempo loss already, right? So I don't know if you want to play this with black right now. I feel like like you can lose one tempo in Berlin maybe. But I mean we have World War 3 on the board, right? I love these discussions with you guys. Eccentric horse, give me that um you agree and we're we're moving on, right? To the since we are having more time today, uh I will also show you a sideline. Um All right, so I guess we guys could move on. Uh, I could leave you at this one. So, very interesting uh, alternative that I want to show you. If you want to play with black color and sometimes surprise your opponents. So, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, d4 takes takes. And here for a blitz, I use that and uh, I don't use it seriously, like in serious games, but I don't play serious games. Remember, I barely play, but online blitz, uh, yeah, I sometimes like to just test some things. And Queen H4 is a very old move. It's not a novelty or anything like that. It, I think it's called Steinitz Variation. And Steinitz is the oldest world champion. So the move itself is very old and... What is nice about that move that white needs to gambit the pawn. There is no line where white holds on to the pawn and is comfortable. White literally will be pawned down. Right. So as a player with the white pieces, you're on move four, you're having this for the first time in your life. Like how how high likely you would be thinking that gambiting the pawn is the way to play in the main line of the scotch on move four or five, right? Usually people are trying to hold on to. Um, I would like to ask you guys, what would you play with white here? Because it's very interesting. We can just test the audience. If you know how to play this, then uh, uh, then you might get an advantage. And white objective here is much better. But how would you guys defend? Imagine this is a blitz game and clock is ticking. So tick-tack, tick-tack, tick-tack. That's what I mean by blitz games, right? BG2, I don't know what you want to play on G2. What do you want to play to... What is the P? Aditya? What is the English uh, name for the piece? I think you're referring to Indian notation. What about English? Pawn to G3? Is that... Ah, that's what you meant. Pawn to G3. Queen E4, right? Time to say goodbye. You have Queen E2, but like Queen swap and black is absolutely fine here, right? Okay. Queen f5. Maybe you mean knight to f5. Like, I don't know, guys. Not Doesn't look good, right? Like, what should white play? E4. 
If I can get the good position against you, it means you should be playing that, remember, right? Okay, knight to f5. Let's think. So what's the idea? I take the pawn and a pawn up, right? What is this? If 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 I get this position as black, I'm playing this against everything. That this would be the best opening against e4, right? Right, so okay, there is also a move uh, takes. Okay, so I take on c6, you play queen e2, trade, trade. What is the problem for black? Pawn up? Pawn up, right? Very interesting, guys, right? Yeah, figure out how to play, come on. So I'm telling you guys, play this in blitz games, right? Don't play it in serious game. If white knows what they're doing, you can run into problems. Okay, so now we have the correct move. The one and only. Like, whatever else you play, guys, I take on e3 and that's it, right? And remember, the knight is under attack as well. So queen e2 won't help. Okay, knight to c3. That's a good try. There is also alternative. Knight c3, there is one more alternative. Bishop to b4. What to play, guys? Everyone who is enjoying the stream, I would really appreciate if you put a like on this video. Thank you very much, guys. You have to give me that, that this is a nice alternative, right? Queen d3 is an old move, right? So we can analyze that a little bit as well. It's an old line, right? So that's how people used to play when they, they didn't know uh, how to play well, right? What else? We're going to take a look at that. So queen to d3, knight to f6, right? And disasters don't stop. So there is still that immense pressure on e4. There is no safe way out a centric horse. That's the problem. With an advantage. So here people tried knight b5, right? There are those who tried knight b5. And then black, black just castled. He was ignoring everything, right? And there are many threats that remain on the board, right? So for example, knight takes e7, knight takes e4, right? And you're gonna be in trouble with such king, yeah. So queen d3, knight f6, right? Resign. <laughs> That's always a move, right? <laughs> uh, there is knight f5 maybe, but queen e4, yeah. It's, it's a mess. So, what do you think, guys? Good good gambit for a surprise weapon? Not too bad, yeah? I think I gave you a good one, then. Alright. So, the main move, right? Which is pretty much the only move for an advantage is bishop e2. If you play anything else, it doesn't work, right? So, you need to play bishop e2. And then, the idea is to go knight b5. So bishop e2, queen e4, otherwise nothing makes sense, and then knight to b5. And then you're aiming that c7 pawn. So black takes. You take with the pawn to leave the knight attacking c7. King to d8, and now castles. And this is the position where, that I was referring to. Black is pawn up, but white needs to develop the initiative. The initiative can be developed, so rook... Rook could be coming to d1, bishop could be coming to d3, maybe bishop to f4, rook to e1. There is initiative. And objectively, black is in trouble. Now, if black manages, he plays knight f6, to get something like a6, rook e8, rook e7, and king e8, king f8, you're in trouble maybe. Yeah, not in trouble, but you're a pawn down. But, um, okay, you can, even if you enter this position, all you need is a plan, like, at least how to continue the game as black. So that you, you don't need to think here. Like, literally, you need to know what to do, more or less, what are the ideas. So the ideas is, like, a6, rook e8. If you can, I, I think that maybe lifting and, and getting the king to f8 would be good. But probably white is not gonna be in time. But even here, there are no clear ways, say, to, to develop that initiative. Like, queen d5, offering queen swap. 
because I'm queen down. Now you cannot exchange, so you need to play some like knight d4, right? And okay, it's it's not so straightforward, right? That's why engine is not saying black is lost. Black is much worse, right? But he is not lost. So yeah, in and there was an alternative. I think after queen h4, there is knight b5 here, right? So then after queen e4, we run into the same situation. Bishop to e2, check. Now, if you play c3, I have bishop a5, that being the point. Then I'm fine. So you need to play knight c3, and then again, same line. Right? Transposes to the main line. Right? So one more time. Queen h4, there is knight b5. If you want to play very ambitiously, there is bishop c5. This move is... Uh, is good for black, right? So this is the most principal line, and that's why knight b5 is not the main line. So for example, queen to f3 and knight to d4, it's a mess basically. But you can investigate that. I gave you an idea, I gave you the main line, right? And here, if you want, you can always go to the main line from this variations as well. And uh, you have work to do now, right? So this is the one one of the of those rare ones that I like to be using. Okay, more uh, more sidelines. This one is from um, from Black's perspective, and here there is Bishop B4 check. So what's the idea of it? The idea is to provoke C3, so that Black's White's knight wouldn't be able to go to C3, and then they play Bishop C5. So this is rare sideline, which is playable for Black, and uh, it is uh, an okay line. It's neither bad or good, it's okay line. So here there are many moves. We could be taking on c6 and enter similar lines, like bishop d3, right? And knight to e7, castles, castles, knight d2. And like the ones we have seen before, right? So white wants to play queen h5, knight to f3, maybe e5, b4. Those are, say, the ideas, right? Many, many deviations. Again, just one of the million plans. So this would be if we take on c6. But my favorite is just simple bishop e3. So we just play bishop to e3. Bishop drops back to b6. And then we go knight f5. So we're just exchanging the dark square bishops. Now, if g6, then I take on b6. Right, that being the point. So knight f5 takes, knight e3 knight f6 and f3 so if if say we go knight d2 then after d5 black supposed to be equal right like this so after f3 i want to play uh c4 and i'm preventing d5 because my queen is watching over the square so that's why i wanted to play f3 instead of knight d2 when my queen is no longer controlling the d5 square Thank you, Nayan. Thank you. Yeah, go to bed. Yeah, Jack. Actually, white does play uh, pawn to c3. Exactly. So there is a line. Um, there is a line with, say, bishop to c5, right? And c3. There, there is exactly that. I'm sorry, not here. We play bishop e3 first. And later we play pawn to c3. Yes. So there is such a line as well. So you could say that he is wasting a tempo, right? But there is, uh, there are many players that like to play this with knight to c3 as well, right? So this is an alternative for black. And I have to say, this is not, it doesn't have like a bad reputation or anything like that. It is a, an okay line for, for black. You could be playing that. It's perfectly normal. White doesn't even have much of an advantage. Just like this. Yeah. Some, some advantage, yeah. All right. Any kind of questions that you want to ask me? Use me as your chess coach. I think that you're good to go with the scotch. Um, before the end of the stream, maybe I can answer any kind of chess related questions. Ask me anything related to chess. And uh, I'm feeling very, very... Uh, Delighted to be teaching you this interesting opening, and I'm really uh, excited about uh, 
you playing this online and letting me know how the results went on Friday. So all who enjoyed the stream, I will see you also on, on Friday at 2 p.m. CEST. And um, I can see there are no questions in the chat. I really appreciate the audience, guy. It, it's um, Someone asked, how do you play against H4 in the advanced Karakhan without getting destroyed? I think there's going to be a, a stream on Karakhan this week. I'm not sure it's, if it's tomorrow, Jack Park, or the day after that. And you will be able to ask this question, right? So someone is going to, 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 to cover that. I think it's going to be an international master. And uh, he will definitely be able to answer that. I myself play Karakhan, but in the Scotch game, I don't want to be looking into other openings, right? What line of Scotch do you prefer as black? As I said, um, as a surprise weapon that Queen H4 seems to be nice. Uh, the line that I didn't cover, but I like to play G6 for a win as well. Just applying pressure on E4 and if F3, then D5 at some point. It's to play against weaker players, right? And if I'm playing something strong, then Bishop Knight F6 and Bishop C5 are definitely two main options, right? I myself maybe like Knight F6 more, right? So this is what I prefer personally. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should be Chestoni. I didn't think about it, right? <laughs> Chestoni. That would sound pretty good, actually. Only if I went back in time, right? Maybe Chestoni. That's very good one. Ooh. Because Tony sounds good as well. I'm used to that already. Who are you supporting in the candidates? I have to remember the, the list of people that actually play in the candidates, right? Who was there? Ding, MVL, Nepo, Giri. Was there Grishuk in candidates? I would support Grishuk. I, I, I think he was. Yeah, Grishuk was in the candidates, right? Ding, like, they are all good. Like, but if I have to choose one, uh, Grishuk is the one that I would love to see in the, in the world. Um, World Championship. Yeah, and Biel and Nepo are leading. Both of them seems... Like, I want Nepo to win because Nepo has very good score against Carlson. I think he has a positive score against Carlson. Nepo beat Carlson more than the other way around. One of the only players. I'm not sure. Not a fact. But I think so. Right. So I would love to see nepo Carlson match. Right. Because against everyone else, Carlson is dominating a lot. Right. This would be very interesting. Oh, I see the list of people, right? I like them all. Like, I, like it, it, it's a thing. You open up top 100. I like them all. There is no people that I, uh, I d d dislike. I mean, they're the, the chess gods of the current generation, right? Right. So maybe from a, a, a standpoint of, uh, of a fan, which match uh, should I want to see the most? That's the question to, to the, the best question, I think, to answer, right? Not who are you rooting for, because I'm rooting for them all. I'm not rooting against anyone. But which match would be most exciting? So that would be Kalsa and Nepo. Nepomnishi. Because Nepomnishi has a positive score, as I mentioned, right? 4 to 1, someone is saying, right? Yeah. So it would be an amazing match. Giri is tough to beat in a match, but we saw matches between them already, right? And Grishuk was much choice because he is so creative and, you know, his personality and all that, right? But maybe, yeah, I, I actually think about the match that I wanted to see, would want to see the most would be in Nepal. Okay, very interesting discussion, guys. Our stream and time is coming to an end. I, for one, one more time, I really want to appreciate you being with me here today, even during uh, such a tournament going on. And I really appreciate that, guys, that you're... Uh, putting likes on the videos, participating in discussions. I really, really enjoy talking to you guys on a personal level. Thanks a lot. I, I hope to share more knowledge on Queen's Gambit on Friday. Um, this is an opening that I, 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 I play a lot. And uh, stay healthy, continue loving the game, and play chess. Thank you very much, dear audience. Um, I will be saying goodbye then, okay? Thank you.